Hey, 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 this is Seagrove, and today I want to talk about something I'm calling the tort effect. So the tort effect is something I'm going to be explaining as we go through this conversation, but it's um, about testing, okay? So last year, at the beginning of the season, there was this ongoing joke, who tests, as in no one tests. Um, it was throughout some of the top players who were able to do well without really testing. And I think that was a pretty widely held sentiment in the community that um, not everyone, a lot of people thought it was dumb and were seriously testing regularly. But a lot of top players had this running joke because they didn't really test very much for events and they were still able to do well. Um, but that season, Pokemon introduced money into the game and this had a number of effects on the game. First of all, it helped the game grow. The game was already growing pretty significantly because of, I think, two other big reasons, which are Pokemon Go and the fact that people my age who've been, who grew up on Pokemon, uh, now have disposable income. So I think uh, that's two other reasons the game was growing. But I do think that adding money definitely helped the game grow, and you see how huge it is now. Uh, the second thing is it allowed for pro players to be a thing. We have I had a series earlier on here, Life as a Pro, and it covered uh, a bunch of the pro players and how they all make their money. Most of them have to supplement it in some way outside of just tournament winnings and being on a team. But the fact that we have teams now and have pro players um, is because of the money in the game. And then the last thing is sort of tied to that, but it's people can spend a lot more time testing now. And at the beginning of the season, it really didn't seem like it was happening too much. But I'm hoping, because of what I'm calling the tort effect, that's going to the amount of testing in the game is going to be um, growing. So, Tord won the NAIC last year, and he was a pretty well-known player in Europe. And a lot of people in the United States knew him, but he became sort of a household name for the game. Um, after winning the NAIC. And, but no one really thought too much of it. Like, okay, yeah, Tord's super, super good, obviously. And his name became, came up in, um, is now coming up in conversations as, or began to, as one of the better players in the game. Then he won the EUIC, and his name is seriously considered, you know, is he the best player currently? Is he one of the best ever? Where does he fall in the list of the best players of all time? And those, those conversations are beginning to happen because of his success. And it came out through social media and stuff that, you know, Tors actually tested a ridiculous amount for this event. And it wasn't exactly clear. I wasn't sure how much. I, th I don't think he, there was an exact number given. So I asked him. And I said, Tor, you know, how, how long did you spend testing? And he said, 240 to 300 hours of testing that's 10 days of straight testing like not sleeping or eating just 10 days worth of straight testing plus um that's the low end of the range so just imagine how much testing he did for this event and i asked him specifically for this event so he said 240 to 300 then i asked a bunch of other players i'm not really going to go into this but i did find it interesting that NA players um, reported testing significantly less than EU players for the tournament. Um, and I think there's a number of reasons for that, but that's just something interesting. But anyways, between the two, the median time tested of... I did ask more NA players, but the median test time reported um, specifically for EUIC was 10 hours. These are, I asked, very, very good players. And they said 10 hours. Compare 10 hours to 240. This is, this is ridiculous. Uh, 24 times to 30 times more than the average uh, professional level player. I'm not saying they actually are the professionals, but people who are um, paid by uh, sponsored, team sponsored, and things like that. Generally, uh, that level of players who I was in, um, surveying. And they said... 10 hours compared to 240 to 300 hours. This is nuts. And I, I believe, I don't have this written down, but I believe that the highest that anyone else reported, the upper end of their range was 50 and the lowest was five. So between five and 50, 
to 240 to 300. Like that is a ridiculous difference in time. And he was able to come up with this new deck and not only come up with this new concept, but actually basically perfect the list for that tournament. Um, so very, very, very impressive. And if you watch the meta forecast for EUIC, he was already talking about Galissapod Zorark and calling it um, like the best deck. And at that time, that early. So he was definitely very, very prepared for this tournament. Afterwards, uh, we saw a bunch of people react on social media, obviously, to how well he did. You know, Pram called him um, one of the greatest players in the game and the best deck in the format. Um, called his deck the best deck in the format so that was that was cool and then brad kershio said something very very interesting i don't remember which platform it was on but he said something to the effect of he was inspired by the amount of time or by how much practice Tord had done and that he wanted to emulate that in order to get the same results because it's pretty obvious that Tord's success is based on his hard work and you can do, uh, that's something that players of that caliber could put in as much hard work and expect similar results. I'm not saying you're going to win, but you're going to be consistently topping even above other really great players if you're putting in the time and you know the meta, etc. So I'm really hoping to see not, not necessarily people of my skill level, but people who are like way up there taking elevating the amount of hours that they are able to put into the game, especially people who are sponsored by teams. I'm really hoping to see them get better. And even though put more time into testing for events, even though that's going to decrease my chances of doing better for the sake of the game, I think it's better to have, to have that. And we already see the same names over and over and over right at the top. Uh, this tort effect that I've been talking about, in a case it's not abundantly clear at this point, the tort effect I'm hoping is it doesn't exist yet exactly. I'm hoping that it's starting to and that it's going to continue, and that is a, a, a increase in the amount of test time, especially among the top players. And maybe this is hypocritical for me to say, but because I'm not going to be able to test a lot more, I am testing more than I have in the past, but I'm not going to be able to do um, what I'm hoping for other people to do. But um, let me know what you guys think about it. If you think it's going to happen, this tort effect, uh, this increase in testing, or if you think people are just going to be like, oh, that's really cool that he did that. I'm not going to do it. Um, if you have an opinion or other thoughts, I'm really interested in what you guys think about this. I, uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching the video. Peace.